<laughs> I've met this guy from Bingham. I'm in the UK, and he's my, my number one YouTube watcher, and I'd like to present you with this, David. A very comfy Bro, love. Hey guys, I was cleaning up the uh, factory the other day and I came across the test piece that I laid up when I was um, laminating the hull. Now this 600mm by 600mm test piece needs to be sent off for destructive testing and uh, and obviously some stress loading to check the um, you know, integrity of my hull lamination. And I've just started cutting it. Now I'm using a normal power saw. Normally you'd use an aluminium um, uh, blade on fiberglass, which obviously will cut neater, but will also blunt it a lot more quickly. I'm just going to use a standard blade here, a very fine cut, because I don't want a lot of chipping and stuff. But I've just cut it here, and it's actually cut quite nicely. And what I want to do is I want to show you the whole section, which is only about six millimeters thick, and that's a reflection of the new styles of laminates and uh, and reinforcements that we're using on uh, on new construction methods. You know, obviously we used to use a lot of chopped matting and, and everything now, but now we're able to get a hole thickness of around about six or seven millimeters, which is you know, stronger than the old layup with a chopper gun. So this is uh, this is the piece I'm gonna get to cutting right now and, uh, and I'll show you the results when I get it back into the factory. Right, oh, well that's now done. Had a bit of an issue with the, uh, the the guard on my saw got caught and I took a little chunk out of it, so I'm probably have to go and do a little repair on that. But uh, yeah, interesting to see how thick this is. Um, it's nowhere near as thick as uh, I would have imagined. And in fact, how solid it is based on the fact that it's got so much quad and uh, and uh, and biaxials and then all that CSM mixed in together is an unbelievably tough laminate. So this is my uh, AMSA test panel. Um, it's a 600 mil by 600 mil uh, representation of my hull at the baseline or right on the keel line. Now I'm required to send this off for destructive testing. Um, and I imagine what they do is they put pressure on it, they'll test it, they'll hammer it and, and destroy it essentially. So we're required to lay this at the actual time of lamination. So what I've done is I've carefully had a piece of uh, uh, sheet metal just laying off to the side every time I got in and did a bit of laminating in one particular hull section, I laid this up. Now this is actually done exactly at the same schedule with the same material, it's all vinyl ester. And, uh, and let's just check the thickness. You can see it there, it's actually not particularly thick. Uh, in days gone by, um, a hull would be simply laid up with a chopper gun for the first few layers and a few layers of, uh, of woven roving reinforcements and then you know, finished off with another couple of layers of, uh, of chop matting just to, to give it a good bonding surface. Um, but the newer laminates, and in fact this laminating schedule, uh, which I'll put up on the screen right now, is quite substantial and it's actually made of uh, woven reinforcements. Uh, with stitch fabric all holding them all together. So you've got on this uh, layup, it is in fact a 300, a 300, a 1200, a 1200 quad. So there's two 1200 quads and another layer of 300, another layer of 300, a layer of 600, another layer of 600, and then two more layers of 300 CSM. That is what you're looking at there. Uh, yeah, quite a Quite an amazing thin laminate for the amount of strength that's there, and, and I mean it is rigid. Uh, this is so that this boat can be essentially sat on a hard stand uh, without uh, compromising, um, you know, compromising the hull. Obviously, you don't want to be sitting it on concrete or anything, but it can be sat on uh, wooden blocks or on on a stand, and and obviously withstand some impact. Now, what is in there is something that won't shatter. Certainly, uh, running into something could be an issue, but. Uh, let's hope that never happens. So let's have a look at the thickness. I'm going to get my caliper gauge here and we're going to uh, going to work out exactly how thick it is. So we run the uh, calipers over it. It's actually eight millimeters. Exactly eight millimeters thick. So that's pretty substantial. Now what I'm looking for is evenness as well. Now this is laminated exactly to spec. Um, I was very, very careful to use a very flat sheet and it's absolutely uniform across the test piece. Now 
Yep. I would have thought it was thinner than that. Yep, I'd say that's a winner. That's basically a uniform piece and can be sent off. Now, you can see there's a bit of a gash in it. I, um, when I put my, my power saw down on the, uh, it's actually got a bit of crap cord in the, uh, in the actual blade and taking a little chunk out of this, I might do a little repair, but uh, you know, that's spot on. And you know, for a lightweight boat like I'm building, uh, that's, that's pretty good given that it's only that first section of the hull, the rest of it's, you know, foam core. So yeah, good experiment. Good to, uh, it's good to be able to follow through on that. I know a lot of you have asked about how thick my hull is and, and the like, so that's it in a nutshell. Standing inside this hull, totally confused as to the layout on the floor. I've tried to draw it out on the floor, um, defining the back wall and all these templates. I've decided I'm going to take a very unorthodox step and make a template of this entire back deck, basically this entire back wall here, and stand it in place in there so that I can start to make sense of what I'm trying to achieve inside. So I've got to get in here and make a template of this particular shape here that goes right down to the hull line and then I'm going to put it in there so that I can at least work around what I'm trying to deal with. Oh, what I'm getting at here is this shape here. So this is the back door of the uh, of the cat, obviously the back entrance to the saloon. The issue I'm trying to work out is this shape here, this one across the coach house roof and down all the way out to the edge, edge of the hull and, and ultimately that uh, that outside hull line is going to determine where the road partitions go and all the other bulkheads. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, use this uh, piece of 4x2 or 2x4 that I have uh, mounted here um, as a baseline, derive a template of the actual shape all the way down transfer it onto some MDF and then I'll take it in there inside the hull and actually uh, stand it up so that I know where all, all of these parts are going to fit. This is becoming a, an increasing problem for me is trying to determine these dimensions um, and, and just trying to get a little bit of a better feel as to where I stand. All right, it's been a little bit crouched in here because this mold's sitting actually on a downhill, so I'm pretty much bent over at about five feet high, and I'm 6'3", so almost 6'3", but you can see here I've actually determined with the chain jig um, pretty much most of this template. The problem I've got is, uh, is then lifting it out and transferring it onto another piece, so I've got to brace this up, and I'm using this one down on the bottom here, this uh, 2x4, as a, as a baseline uh, to derive the template for up on the mould, but that is in fact the the hull edge. So the nice thing about that is I've, I've actually determined the level of the hull side, so that if I transfer that properly over onto the big mould, then onto the hull, then I'm, I'm pretty much dead accurate. But um, the other advantage of doing this now is it might seem like a bit of a waste of time now, is that later on I need to determine a, uh, a solid bulkhead that actually mates with the back of the physical mould. Uh, it's not a complete bulkhead, it's a partial bulkhead, but it's actually shaped like so that's going to fit and physically adhere to the physical deck as it 
caps over the top. So the more work I do now, it'll actually save me work in the long run. And that's the thing with templating. If you're prepared to do the, uh, do the extra work early, it'll save you a hell of a lot of time in that finishing process. Okay, we got it out before I had a chance to film it, but that's it, that's the shape of my deck back level with the uh, with the hull side so very very good Okay, so that was a morning's work, good doing that. Um, probably could have done it a bit quicker, but I had a lot of people dropping in. And honestly, when you get people in, you know, I, I think Betsy on this SV Seeker once said that uh, talk don't build boats. And uh, you know how much I love to have a chat, but I had a lot of chatting going on today. I've had honestly like six people drop in and uh, and it does start to take its toll on on my uh, on my productivity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's just the way it is. You know, you're building a boat, people want to have a chat and it's great. But yeah, so this template here, uh, that's not where it's going to sit. It's actually going to sit on this line uh, right here. There's a line about 50 centimetres onwards, so right there. And I, what I need to do though is I need to lift it up to the height of the uh, of the hull side. So I've got to go back to Savo and I'm going to measure the inside of the height of the deck. And then I have to add 50 mil on top because the deck actually sits 50 mil above the bridge deck but i'm actually inclined to think it's only 20 mil because of the 30 mil foam that i already have there so there's a couple of things to think about with uh installing the deck but what i'm going to do i'm going to transfer this whole template onto around about two or three sheets to mdf and then i'm going to brace it all up and then i'm going to have a perfect back of the boat here profile uh template for uh you know for referencing wardrobe petitions and you know the double bed frame and everything is going to go in here so there's a lot of stuff that uh, this is going to solve and you can see that the shape's absolutely spot on to the deck so it's going to give me a really good reference point now for the rest of all the modules and stuff that are going to go in and all the bulkheads that i've got to make for this particular section okay so luckily i've got uh, joel next door he gets a lot of uh, nine millimeter mdf as packing with all of his melamine sheets for his cabinetry uh business so he just uh, either he's going to chuck them away or snap them before uh, before he gets a chance to cut them up and chuck them in the bin because it's just such a waste. But the good thing is I'm able to use these as templates and uh, really at no cost to me. So kudos to you, Jolly. Right, oh, so I've basically got this template for the port side. It's going to stand the reason that it actually belongs and it is exactly symmetrical for the starboard side. I'm not going to go in and re template the starboard side, there's absolutely no point. So I'm just going to cut two of everything and, uh, and pray that it's going to be exactly the same. It looks the same. I've pretty much done a couple of rudimentary measurements and, uh, you know, all things being equal, it should be identical.
Oh, it's been a big afternoon, hasn't it, mate? <laughs> big afternoon. Every day is a big afternoon. We've got uh, got a pretty defined shape here. This is our back door, and uh, yeah, I'm really quite glad we did that template, John. After all that. Oh well, it gives you a good idea. Yeah, I've got a real feel for the space I'm dealing with now. What I'll what I'll do too is I'll go over to the kitchen module that I have, the mould, and I'll lay a piece of MDF over it, and it actually comes right out over the top here. It comes out to this edge here. It hangs right out over this module, and then goes that way to that wall, so it fits so in here. It sits in mid air. Yeah, it sits out in mid air over the top of this module. Mm. In, uh, in the UK, we're up on the northwest coast, up in uh, Barrow in Furness. This is uh, Janet walking on a home beach. Apparently she used to come out here and walk in the wind and used to be able to walk horizontally into the wind. It was that bad. So this is the, uh, the Irish Sea out here. And what you can see beyond Janet, I don't know whether you can see it, you probably can't, but there would be close to a thousand windmills out there. Uh, probably about what look of it, probably two or three miles offshore. And, uh, and apparently the UK is aiming for about 30% of renewable uh, energy. And wow, it's a, it's a fair sight to see. You know, you can see the impact it has on the landscape. Around about 20 miles north of here, straight up here is uh, Sellafield or Windscale, I think they call it now, which is a big nuclear power station. And uh, yeah, they've obviously had some issues with that in the past. But, you know, we were married in this town here about 28 years ago. Uh, our, the church is up on the hill up there. Yeah, this, this beach is quite beautiful. It's, a, it's an 11 mile long island. And uh, yeah, not a lot of trees here because I think the wind hammers it. But yeah, it's quite a nice place and I love it. And, uh, and it's nice to see Janet out. And she just said to me, it's so nice coming here in summer. Normally Janet will visit around October. November time and uh, you know winter's starting to settle in we're here in August and it's still pretty nice it's the sun's out and uh, yeah it's not it's not hot but it's not cold and we're loving it we're just getting over our jet lag we had about a 40 hour from door to door um, trip and so I had a really good night's sleep last night I'm a little bit smashed today so it's nice to get out in some fresh air and uh, and yeah check out the scene and very very good to see that this beach doesn't have a lot of rubbish on it the last time I was here there's so much debris and stuff on the beach um, fishing nets plastics picked up a little bit back there but yeah nothing like it used to be 30 years ago take your life in your hands walking on these narrow lanes bit of a steep hike up uh that's uh, Allswater in the background over there, and we're heading up. Bit of a steep little pinchy. Getting the old uh, sinuses cleared out today. Whew. Like a good hike. Wild and windy day. <laughs> in the middle of summer in the UK. Yep. Um, we're rugged up. It's awesome though. It's certainly a stark contrast to what we're used to, but look at this, what a beautiful place this is. This is Oldswater up in the, oh, it's probably in the southern area of the Lake District. Just magnificent. Yes. Amazing. What do you reckon, Jen? Summer in the lakes. <laughs> Why did I move to Australia? <laughs> Welcome to life on the hills. <laughs> I've met this guy from Bingham, I'm in the UK, and he's my, my number one YouTube watcher, and I'd like to present you with this, David. 
very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> bro, love. Bro, love. Bring it in, bring it in. Oh, you do realize I hope it's a people. very big one. <laughs> <laughs> you do realize that the people will be watching. <laughs> Oh, how good's that? <laughs> there you go. You're going to be in my Edward oh, or in Nottingham. Nice. Hey? Eh? Number one fan. There you go. I want Number one English fan. I'm not gonna... So there you go. How good's that? <laughs> they put my top off first. That would get rid of all of you. Hey, you're going. You're going. Oh, you're going. Yeah. Hey. Smell. Legend. Turn around. <laughs> Excellent. As Janet always says, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. David's actually my brother-in-law and we spent a magic week catching up with Janet's three sisters and, uh, and mum on the northwest coast of England. Funnily enough, they're all from a shipbuilding uh, community and uh, Janet ended up marrying someone who's a boat builder, so I think that's quite ironic. We had a great few nights out with the family. Janet got to catch up with her sisters and I haven't been for 13 years, so it was a wonderful week and then we headed off to, uh, to Europe for the rest of our holidays. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode, guys. Sunny England, beautiful. See you next time on Live on the Hills.